Hello everyone, thank you for your support so far. On today's video, I want to show you this game called Summoner's Creed. The ads on this game are actually pretty funny on Facebook, that's why I decided to play it. And if you have some time, you should play it too. Anyway, so let's get right into it. Before I show you how I made the bot for this game, I want to show you what the mechanics are. Yeah. So basically we have two game modes, which is classic mode and challenge mode. On classic mode, we're going to be looking at this part right here, which in English is joint revenge hard mode. And on challenge mode, we're going to be looking at the evil, evil summoner on hard mode. So basically joint revenge on hard mode is the fastest and best way to obtain rewards. I haven't tested tested it out myself, but apparently that's the best way to get rewards. Okay, so let me just arrange my monsters and I'll be back in a minute. Well, this is one of the mechanics. Uh, when you are offline, you gather gold automatically. You know, for no reason, you're just being on, on offline get gold. So when you log back in, you have the option to collect it. I just turned blue, blue stacks off, turned it back on, and I got this many coins. So they can be pretty good rewards. We have the option to multiply them by two if we watch a video, which we want at this time. So let's just pick up the reward and keep watching. This is the user interface and we're going to look at different things. Over here we have this achievements section where we get gems for doing different stuff. And well, it's, you know, the same as in any other game, completing a certain amount of weights, killing a certain amount of enemies, summoning a certain amount of times, etc. We also have this summoning tab right here. If we click on it, we can see this option down here to summon 10 times on a single click using 100 green orbs. So I have 200, let's summon twice. When summoning, you can get, well, when summoning using the green orb, you can get a range of monsters from common to legendary. Common being the ones with this grayish background and legendaries have like a yellowish or gold background. Anyway, let's hope we get a legendary on this on this run. Oh yeah, so we did. So this is a legendary I was I was going to say Pokemon. Uh, this is a legendary month. So as you can see now that I only have four gems that well I can't click on the summoning button and it tells me that I can, if, if I could summon, it would only be one summon for 10 summoning orbs. So let's get back to the main page. As you can see, we have this like 1x button. If we click on it, it's going to increase in speed. One thing to be noted is that I bought this option here. I'm not sure how much it costs, but I bought two things and it wasn't more than $5. So this guy brings us to our next mechanic, which is the ad man. I call him monitor man. So he offers you rewards for watching a video. So let's click on the video and let's see it. So you, you need to wait for some time to pass and then you close the ad and then you collect the reward. The ad man or the monitor man is the biggest challenge for this bot because he's very common. You will see him on each round like uh, we're on wave 3 and on joint revenge the waves are I think 20 so on those 20 waves you're gonna watch that guy from 6 to 7 times I think anyway he's always going to offer you rewards such as summoning orbs such as those special orbs that we saw purple gems and I think that's it so when we you watch the app you get the rewards now the ads are a challenge on themselves because the X, well the time to wait for them is going to vary from ad to ad. 
we actually got a very short one, which was like five seconds. But normally they're 30 seconds, sometimes up to 45. And the X and that you need to press to close it will change from shape, color, and position. Not so much, but it will change, which turns into a challenge. And that was my biggest challenge. Okay, let's pay attention to this guy now. He's the salesman. And whatever he's selling, you want to buy, right? Everything is always cheap and it doesn't take any time. You just click on whatever you want. He also offers orbs, gems, special orbs, and I think that's it. The admin is what I compare to the verification system in other games. This game doesn't have player-to-player -player trading, so it doesn't have a lot of security on that matter. But closing the ads can turn into a challenge and it took me like five days to complete the boat mainly because I couldn't figure out a way to 100% get the rewards from Monitor Man. I haven't yet, but at least I know how to get most of the rewards and keep the bot running. And a little hack that I discovered is that um, if you have no internet connection, you're not gonna get him. So it might, it might actually be more cost effective just to play the game without watching any ads. But for the sake of, well, you know, my own entertainment and for this video, I made it my challenge to be able to watch the ad and close it and get the rewards. And that's what I'm going to show you at this time. Okay, so here he is again. Well, I think Google knows we're on YouTube and that's why he's sending us only five second ads but that's not always the case. As you can see, we're getting purple gems because we're killing bosses. <laughs> this guy, whose name is, by the way, Jiraya, like the Naruto master, um, he's killing everything before they come in, right? But anyway, when you kill bosses, sometimes they'll give you uh, purple gems. It's not very common, but they do drop them. And bosses will always give you three summoning orbs which you can use to summon monsters as we saw a bit earlier oh another ad yeah see this one is a bit longer this one is i think 30 seconds long and i want to point out that the x is over here it's a different color different shape and a different position from the other one and uh, like this, we have many options on the ads. And that's what became the challenge for this bot, mainly. So yeah, I think that's all we need to know. When we kill enemies, we also get coins. You can see my coins, you know, coins are increasing. And we basically get everything that we need from this challenge. The only thing we're not going to get is blue gems. So if I click on my monsters, you can see that, well, this guy in here, who is Zeus, by the way, uh, I need 77,000 coins for the next level up, right? But um, when you reach level 400, like this guy here called Lightning, um, I need these blue power gems, right? So we're not gonna be able to get these power gems from this joint revenge mode. To get them, we need to go to the challenge mode and um, challenge, do this challenge, which is the Evil Summoner Challenge. So if I click on it on a heart, you'll see that we're not getting any coins, we're not going to get any gems, we're not going to get any summoning orbs. All we're going to get is those blue power gems. There's no monitor man, there's no self man. The thing is, as you just saw, that after every way, that monster, well, that evil summoner, is going to take monsters from us. So, if I just decide to close and continue with the monsters I have, uh, uh, well, you know, I might win. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and we won. And, well, she took basically everything else down. So we never know what she's going to take. It's always kind of random. 
but let's see if we can beat her with our current monsters. Yeah, so I, I think we're gonna we're gonna win. I don't know. Anyway, while the game is playing, um, there's only three waves on this mode. This is our last wave, and the challenge on this one is distributing our monsters efficiently so that we always or almost always win. Um, so that's it. Those are the two modes that we are going to try and bot. I hope that the explanation on the mechanics was good enough and let's just dive right into the code. When I began this project, I didn't think it would amount to a lot of time or effort, but it ended up being almost a 1,000 times, 1,000 lines long. Also, I didn't put much effort into organizing it at the beginning. I tried to do that later on. So it might get a sloppy here and there, but I'm sure you will learn some pretty cool tricks about potting. Okay, so anyway, we have two classes. Our first class is the monster class. It's actually a very simple class. So we'll look into this class later on because I use this one mostly for the evil summoner challenge. And this one is, this class is basically the user interface. So this is like generic. We can use this class on any, any game mode. Um, basically, I try to divide it up we initiated our constructor as always and you know that as soon as we call this class all of these attributes are going to run automatically so I try to divide them up nicely the first like category are positions and areas so the, the first one for example says achievement button pot so if I open up the game uh, basically, these coordinates correspond to this icon right here, right? Um, achievements area, which, okay, this is very similar to this one because this one gives me specifically the coordinates to click here. And the achievement, let's see, achievements area, are a small area for example from here to here and basically the game is going to well the bot is going to take a screenshot of this part to read um, specifically the achievement button if we have if we are able to you know collect achievements or not so basically all of them represent either coordinates of different uh, buttons or parts of the game and also areas right um, then we have the window references so on this one this might be the most important one is the chest image right so basically here we're looking for this chest right here I just took a screenshot of that of it and then I put the image into an image folder that I have for my bot. It's called images. The folder is images. And then if we go to the chest image, we can see that we have this image right here. Right? So basically I loaded a lot of useful images that I need. In this case, all of these images are going to help me um, identify what window we're at. So on this one, we're at the match window, right? So if we go for select map images, uh, I think this one shows up when the game is finished. I will leave a screenshot of it so you guys can see it. Okay, so the next one is called buttons. Things you can click on the interface, right? So for example, this one says achievements button image, yeah. Uh, let's do a different one. This one, one X bit image, right? So if I go to my images folder, here it is. So it's going to look for this one, and you can click on it. So in this one, it's it's just loading it. So the bot has the image and its memory, and then we can use it afterwards. But basically, that one is this one here, right? So 
it's it's one x right now and we click on it and then it's two x basically as you can guess the the idea behind it is that if it sees one x it's going to click on it so it's two x and the game runs faster and then we have x buttons basically the x buttons are well you know buttons so that you can close something so if you have for example this window it's impeding the view we can see anything so we click on it so the game can continue there are three of them and we just load them using a for loop and then we have templates these images are things you cannot click on but they're useful for well different things so for example on this one uh, let's go to the the first one attack post image right so if I go to my images we can see that it's right here basically the the idea behind that one is that if the monitor man he's not up right now but if the monitor man is offering an attack boost in exchange for watching an ad we're gonna ignore it because we don't need attack boost and we have a lot of those we'll look into everything basically as the video goes on and as I'm explaining the entire box to you. Okay, the next one is the challenge charges, right? So if I click on this one and this basically is a challenge and I have charges here. The reason I decided to do this is because, well, as you can see, we have four out of five and we can use a Python library. I call it, it's called PyTesseract, something like that. Basically, it reads the text in an image. Basically, turns an image into text that we can manipulate and read and stuff like that. So, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to in install PyTesseract mainly because I didn't want to relearn all of that. So, I just figured, hey, hey I'm going to take a screenshot of every charge. Like, well, let's actually just look into it. I am stands for Invocadora Maligna, which is Evil Summer, right? So I am, I am. Here it is. So this is the image that appears when we have zero charges, and this one charge, and this one is four charges, right? So basically, depending on what image it finds, we can guess how many charges we have left. This is especially important because when it has zero charges, you need to pay purple gems to recharge again. And basically it's just one step that we need to make, otherwise the bot will break. Then we have the add X image list. And basically they are different options of X's that can appear on the ads, right? As you can guess, I, I had to watch like a lot of ads and just figure out how many different axes there were take the screenshots and cut the axes out to fit them to the box so basically they just load those axes the next one is very similar but instead of axes it's arrows at R yes. so um, as I mentioned before when these guys show up you need to click on them then wait some time and then click on the X in order to be able to close the ad yeah. uh, something to be noted is that the zero here uh, stands for basically grayscale so we're lo loading all of the images in grayscale and another important trick is that because we're loading all of the images before the bot actually even starts it's going to save us a lot of time. So something that is very recommended is that you load all of your images before your main loop. And doing this will enable your bot to run a lot faster, especially if you're handling a lot of images. Okay, and then we have this grid. Um, well, th this first one doesn't really do anything. Uh, it's just a way that I use to illustrate how the game works. And basically we have three places on top for monsters. Let me show you. Yeah, so we have three places on top, right? And then we have three places on the middle, and then we have three places at the bottom. So that's that's just illustrative for me. And we're gonna 
come back to this on the able summoner part of the bot. So that's it for our constructor. We have a lot of methods for this class and we will look into them as we go through how, how our bot works. On this part here, we are initiating our user interface instance. So on this line, it's going to load all of the images and all of the data that I just showed you. So it's very important uh, to load everything before, before we actually start our bot to save us a lot of time and make the bot a lot faster. Okay, and then we have uh, different monsters. Right. These are, I, I created this to beat the evil summoner challenge and we'll look into them later on. So on our main function, we have two parameters. The first one being the game mode. And in here we have the joint revenge and evil summoner options. So as we previously saw, joint revenge is this one on hard mode and Evil Summoner is this one also on a hard mode. And then we have a reset underscore stats parameter, which is either a boolean, either true or false. So if it's set to true, it's going to record some stats. Here I have an example. This one is actually outdated. And the current one has, I think, five categories. But on this one, we can see that ads watch, game restart, and some. Right? So it basically records what? the bot does throughout the, the round. So it, by default it's going to be set to true, which it means that when the main function runs, it is going to enter in this into this if conditional, right? So in this case it's going to be set equal to true. And it's going to set, it's going to look for another condition, which is this one. So the OS module is pre-built into Python and it does a lot of things. So what we're, we have it done, doing here is that using its path, I'm sorry, using the path it is going to access the exists method and basically it's going to return true or false. If it's true it means that this stats.txt file exists and if it's set to false, it means it doesn't exist. So if both of these statements are true, then the OS module it is going to remove this file. It's going to delete it. And my stats handler is going to create a new txt file with new stats that are going to be updated depending on what we want it to report. Over here we have the summoning. We have two, basically they're counters, right? So this counter counts uh, how many loops have gone by and after a determined amount of loops, it is going to start summoning. This allows some time for green orbs to gather. And also we have a window inactive counter. So after some time, if the bot doesn't see the game window, it obviously means something is wrong, right? So after some, some time, after a determined amount of loops, this counter will help us just stop the bot from working and will stop using computer resources. And then we're going to enter our first if. We basically have two big if uh, blocks. The first one is about the joint revenge game mode. So as you may imagine, it is all the code is going to be within this uh, while loop because we want it to run forever unless something goes wrong, right? So let's explore what it does. Okay, so this first if statement, uh, it's going to look for the match window if the, if the match window is active. So if the what if the match window is active, it is going to return I think yeah a tuple, and if it's not active, it is going to return none. So let's see what it does specifically, right? Okay, so we have this chest on the screen pause, and actually instead of pause, it's more like area, right? So basically in the game window, let's go to jungle revenge there. So basically on the game window. 
that area is somewhere about here to here, right? So what it does is that it is going to take a screenshot of that area and then it is going to use our chest underscore image which I already showed you but let me just put it up again this one. So it's going to look for this image within that area, right? And this is going to return either a tuple or none. Um, and actually, before I continue, this match template method function, it's a, a custom function that uh, I already made, right? So it's within this detectors module, which has both match template and sift. For this game, we're actually only using match template. I already have two videos on how to use match template. So if you're not familiar with it, you should totally check it out. Anyway, uh, this is either going to return a tuple if it found it and none if it didn't. The tuple, as you may guess, are the x, y coordinates of the image that is being queried. In this case, chest image. So if it finds it, it's just going to print out, yeah, the, we found the chest and then it's going to return. And if we didn't find it, it is going to run this and another method called, called, called sorry, closed third window. So basically this one also just takes a screenshot and looks for the X buttons. So as you remember, it's this one, right? So it's going to look for the X buttons and if it sees them, it is going to close them. So let me just show you real quick how that works. If I have a pop-up window and I run the code, it's going to close it, right? So that's, it wants to see the chest at all times. Now it's gathering, but I have to stop it. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so game window is not active, and then it closed the window, and then it saw the chest, and, it be and then it began doing other things. So that's basically what this, what this part of the code does. Okay, so if it didn't, for any reason, it didn't see the chess game window and it was unable to close any pop-up windows, it's going to go into this part of the code. This is called the match done handler. So if I open it up, we can see that it also looks for something else, right? And this one is going to look for an image called continue. So basically this image, if it finds it, it means that the match is over and uh, the game needs to be restarted, right? Okay guys, so I waited for a match to end just so that I could show you how this works. So basically what this code is doing, it's going to look for this image right here, the continue button, and all of the rest is just like clicking and clicking back on hard mode, etc. So I'm just gonna show you how it works. So first it clicked continue, then it clicked on the hard mode button, and then on the confirm button. If it was able to continue the match, like if a match ended and then, then it restarted again, it, it's going to go back into the main loop. And obviously on here, it is going to see the shift and it's going to exit this block and continue on to the next one. However, if not, none of the above was possible, it, the window inactive counter is going to go plus one. And after 20, <coughs> 20 times the window being inactive, it's going to restart the game, right? So this is actually one of the longest methods that I have, and we'll, we'll look into it. Okay, so basically what it's going to do, it's going to take a screenshot, and then it's going to look for the blue stack logo image, which is this one. If it sees it, it's going to be like, okay, blue stacks is open, right? And if it isn't, it's going to try and open blue stacks. So we'll go back to this in a little bit. If for some reason blue stack is open, but the game window is not, it is going to close all tabs that are available, right? So I'm just going to show you how that works. To do that, we're going to access the user interface and the restart game method, right? And after that, I'm just going to exit the code. I don't want to do anything after that. 
Okay, yeah. So what it should do now is it should go like yeah, the blue stack is opened. And, and then it should close the, the game, the game tab. So basically it is going to move the mouse up here. It's going to wait a little bit for the little X to appear and then it's going to click on it. And it's going to do this two times. Yeah. Zero, one, two. It's actually going to do it. Zero, one. Yeah, two times. This is because sometimes there is another tab open like over here. It might be like a Google Play tab. And if it only closes one, then it's still going to not, it's going to obstruct the view for, from this one. And this is the window, the game window that we want to see, right? So it's going to, it's going to close at least two tabs. We might need to increment this to three just, you know, to make sure. Okay. So after it closes the, the game tabs, it is going to click on here and let's see yeah it is going to click there and then it's going to look for the game image which is this one right here right okay so when it sees it it is going to click on it if it doesn't see it it's just going to close everything and this is going to lead to the spot and uh, well you know stopping and this is basically just a loading, a loading loop. It is going to wait five minutes for the game to load. And once it is loaded, it is going to return true. If for some reason it doesn't return here, it means the game didn't load. And it is going to take a screenshot for me to see later on what happened. And it's going to return false, which ultimately will lead to the bot stopping as well. So as you can see, there is a, a lot of if else statements. It might get a little confusing, but that's how, well, you know, the more intelligent you want your bot to be, the more complex the mechanics are. So anyway, I will run the code just to show you what, what it does. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to close the, the game window. Okay, so it's closing the tabs. Now it's clicking on my game. It, <clears throat> if you notice, well, it clicked on the game, on the game logo now, right? So now it's waiting for the, well, for an image that tells us that the game is loaded, right? So this is the first time it looked for it. It's going to rest and try again in a few minutes. Well, in a few seconds, actually. Yeah, and it found it, and it clicked on it, and and that's it. So that's how the the restart function works, right? So it closed the window, and then it restarted. Now, what happens? What happens if it doesn't find blue stacks? If blue stacks for some reason is not on. Okay, so it's going to run this method, which is open blue stacks. And basically, what it does is puts, well, it inputs a series of things that will lead to opening blue stacks. It's going to click the, the left Windows button. It's going to type blue stacks and it's then, it's then going to hit enter, which will open blue stacks itself. After that, it is going to, well, let me show you just manually. It's going to type blue stacks, it's going to hit enter, and this should appear, right? After that, it's going to look for the BlueStacks logo name, which is this one right here. It's going to look for that. So I'm going to minimize it to show you the next part. Okay, so now it's going to look for the Maximize logo for on the BlueStacks window. And basically, this is the, the maximum, well, this is the Minimize logo, right? So if it, if it finds it, it's going to be like, yeah, blue stacks is, is there and it's maximized return. And if it doesn't find it, it's going to double click on the, on the name, on the blue stacks name. And this will cause blue stacks to maximize, right? Yeah. So I guess that's it. If for some reason nothing of this was possible, again, it's just going to close everything down. 
and this will lead to the bot, um, you know, quitting. And after that, I will see what happened and try to fix it. Okay, so I, apparently there's something else going on here. So it's going to look for BlueStack win loaded reference. So I have a reference that tells me that the BlueStacks window is ready, right? So right now it's ready for me to open the game. If you, well, you know, if you use BlueStacks, you know that sometimes there's like this loading window and you need to wait for it to be loaded. So it's going to look for a reference that it's ready and it's being loaded. And we can actually see what that reference is, which is this one. So if it sees this, this image, which is right about here, it means that BlueStacks is ready to, well, whatever is next. And in this case, well, there's nothing next. It's going to be BlueStacks is ready and return. If it's not loaded yet, if it needs more time, it's going to wait a maximum of five minutes. And after five minutes, it's going to give us well, it's going to take this screenshot, like BlueStacks load error, so that I can see it when I get back to the computer, and it's going to return false. And again, returning false means that the bot will ultimately stop. Okay, so let's see how that works. I'm going to close BlueStacks now, so there is actually no BlueStacks, right? There's no anything. And the method is open BlueStacks. And it says blue stacks is ready, right? Okay, so I guess that was the most complex part about the bot. So if for some reason the bot can't find anything, it's just going to close the game and restart it. And if it doesn't see blue stacks, it's going to open up blue stacks again, right? And this is our Windows Inactive Counter. And here it's going to reset to zero because if it was able to get past this block, it means that the bot can see the game image, the game window reference, which is the chest. And for that reason, there is no need to continue incrementing the counter. And on the other hand, we need to reset it to zero. Because if we don't, eventually it is going to close and the bot is actually running the way it should be. Okay, so the next part of the code is actually also one of the most complex things and it is the monitor main handler. Let's see what this method has. Okay, so the first thing it does is look for the monitor main, looking for the monitor window. So it's going to search this image called monitor main win image. Let's see what it is. Yeah, this one. Okay, so if if the bot sees this image, it means that the monitor man is around, right? And it should continue with, with the logic. If it didn't find that image, it means he's not around and the bot can continue on to the next part. Now, if the monitor man is active, one of the rewards that it offers is an attack boost. And here I have it. This is the attack boost. So basically, this reward is pretty useless, right? So if it finds this uh, reward, it's going to click on no tanks and it's going to continue with the logic. We don't want that reward because it's basically useless and a waste of time. Now, if it didn't see the attack boost reward, it is going to click on the watch video tab and it's going to send us some feedback. Now this is where it gets hard. Uh, the next part of the logic is actually just closing the app, right? So I'm basic, basically putting everything on this for loop. We're gonna try to close the app two times. The first thing we're gonna do is just wait 45 minutes. So as you remember, there are some ads that finish in like five seconds, right? So I tried to implement a logic where after five minutes it would look for the X, but then I had other ads where the X was very similar. 
and they didn't finish in five minutes, in five seconds, sorry, they finished in like 40 or 30 seconds. And what this cost is for a small notification window to appear where it said um, the time isn't over yet, are you sure you want to close the video? You want to get the rewards. And basically this just messed up my part. So I, in the end, I just went for just, you know, waiting 45 seconds and I was sure that after this time, any ad will be ready to close. Now, if, okay, so after the 45 seconds, one of the problems that I had is that sometimes the bot will actually try to click on the close video tab, but it wouldn't do anything because it was actually too late. And at one point, uh, it tried to click on the video, it didn't do anything, and the match ended. And, well, it messed up my part. So what I did then, what I did then to fix that, is that it checks if the match is over. And if it is over, it is going to handle it, as we previously saw, and it is going to start the game over again. Not the entire game, but just the match, right? It's going to going to joint revenge again. It's not going to close blue stacks or any of that. So if it if it didn't uh, if it wasn't able to to handle the match done, it is going to enter this next step, which is check if the ad closed automatically. So there are some ads that close on their own. And if that happens, obviously the chest is going to become visible. So what it's doing here is it's checking if the chest is visible. If it is, then uh, it's, it the ad closed on its own and we can continue the game and it's going to return, right? It's going to return. Well, actually before returning, it is going to collect, collect the rewards, right? So, in here, it is going to click at this position. I guess it is just like the, where it collects the reward or something like that. And this one is actually pretty important because it registers the stats. In here, it's going to be like, hey, are you watching that? I'm going to go plus one on the stat about ad watching. So let's take a look at this method. So as you can see, the file, the default file for storing stats is the stats.txt. And first it's going to check if it doesn't exist, right? So if the file doesn't exist, it is going to create it. And it is going to write this on that stats.txt file. After that, it is going to populate the the dictionary. So what we're doing is we're just reading uh, the file and then we're using the legendary evolve function of Python. So basically what this does is that it's going to take this string because obviously it is going to read it as a string, right? So it is going to read it as a string and Python is going to be like, hey, this looks like a dictionary and it is going to automatically turn it into a dictionary for us. It is one of the miracles of Python. Okay, so in here, we're gonna take our input, which is update underscore key. Um, as you remember, the input uh, for what we were previously looking at is at watch, right? So it is going to access the at watch key in our dictionary and whatever the value is, it is going to add one to it. And finally, it is going to, basically what this code does is erase everything in there and write the new information. So basically it's just going to erase everything and it's going to write it all over again. But in this, in this case, instead of a six, this, is, this should be a seven, right? So that's what the stats method does. It's basically optional. It's not necessary for your bot at all. But I think it's always interesting to have 
that information just so you know how your bot is working or how your bot is doing. Okay, so we were on the monitor man handler, right? And I think we were about here. Okay, so after it registers the, the app, it is going to return. Because remember that on this part of the code, uh, the app closed on its own and we just collected the reward and that's it, right? And it's going to click on the collect reward button. Okay, so now we have the double arrows. Okay, so all of the previous uh, handlers were just different like possibilities, right? And one of them was, okay, it didn't actually click on the video, watch video button, and the match ended. And the other one was, uh, well, you know, the ad closed on its own, and stuff like that. So, from here on out, we're actually going to try and close the ad ourselves. So, on this part, let's see, we're going through the arrow images, right? So as you remember, it's at R. It is going to look for these images on the on the ad window, and if it sees them, it's obviously going to click on them. So if it sees them, it is. I have a small you know logic here. Basically, what it does is, uh, well, as you know, match template returns the top left coordinates which is right about here. So instead of that, I just wrote some logic to click on the center of the image, not on the top left corner. So that's what all of this is about. So it's going to click on the arrow. And after that, it is going to sleep for 15 more seconds. And the reason it does this is just to give some time for the X button to load because it doesn't just automatically appear. Sometimes it takes like 5 seconds or 10 seconds. So in the end, I just went for 15 seconds just to make sure that it had more than enough time to load the, the X button. And it's going to give us some feedback on which was the arrow button that it found. I think this, this should go into the, into the stats. It will be a great idea to add this to the stats just to know which one is more common, right? Okay, so as soon as it clicks on an arrow button, it is going to break. If it doesn't, it's eventually going to break anyway, right, from this loop. And it's going to enter this next loop. And this one is exactly the same, but instead of looking for the arrow buttons, it is going to look for the X buttons. And again, if it finds them, it is going to click on the X and it's going to close the app. Now, after we've done, let's see, yeah, after we close the ad, it is going to enter this next conditional, which is the match window active method. So obviously after watching an ad, it should, and collecting the reward, it should return to this screen, right? And the chest should be visible. So I'm just making sure that the chest is visible. So if it is visible, it is going to go into this collect rewards method. Then basically what it does is just, you know, click the, the collect reward method. There's no science in there. And if it finds it, if it finds it, well, actually no. After collecting it, it will automatically update our stats dictionary. And the function will end. Now, obviously, if the chest is not visible, this code won't run and it won't return and it is going to go to this else statement, right? So if it doesn't see the chest, it means, you know, something went wrong. The most common things that used to happen were that, uh, well, you know, the bot clicked on, it where it shouldn't click and the Google Play tab opened, right? So what I, what it does here, it says click back arrow button, which is this one right here. So like on your cell phone, what this thing does is just go back. It closes a window if it's there 
and just goes to whatever window you were previously on. So a lot of times this fixes that problem and it closes whatever is obstructing the view from the game window. So after clicking the back arrow, if the chest is visible, it'll collect the reward and register that another ad was watched. And otherwise, like if none of the above worked, it is just going to check for, um, it's going to check again for arrows and for X's and obviously click on them if it sees them. Now, if that didn't work either, it's going to, well, it's going to run again, right? It's going to run again. It's going to try and close it again. It's going to sleep another 45 seconds and do everything again. Now, if it tries to do it twice and there was no success, it is going to take a screenshot of this. This is called unsolvable ad, right? And the last time that happened, well, for some, actually here you can see the Google Play, the Google Play tab. And last time, the reason this is my unsolvable ad is because, uh, like I mentioned before, it clicked on the watch video button, but it turns out it didn't actually, well, the game didn't read it, and it continued to play, and the match ended, and then it tried, the bot tried to continue, thinking there was an ad, and it turns out there was no ad, it was just this window. But we got rid of that problem, because as we mentioned before, uh, one of the first things it does is see if the match is over and handle that. Now, after trying all of the above and failing, it is going to try and restart the game, which we already saw. It's going to close the game. If it's, if it's, if BlueStacks is not open, it's going to, you know, open BlueStacks again. So after doing this, most of my problems disappear and the bot works really nice okay so this has this was actually the, the hardest part so anyway if so if it returns false it means something went terribly wrong and there's no fix in it so it is going to just stop the bot right if that doesn't happen it's just going to continue if the monitor man is not there it's going to return none right so because it returns none um, this is not going to run and it's just going to continue on to the next step which is this one. So actually before going on to this part I'm just going to show you how this works on the actual game. Yeah. Okay so monitor man is here I'm going to run the bot and it should click yeah there it is so it's it clicked on the watch video and again Google is just showing off giving us 5 second ads. But it's going to wait for 45 seconds and I'll just let you see what how it works. So because of all of this, okay it's going to click accept and then the game continues and I'm gonna stop it. Yeah, uh, okay. It's collecting achievements. Okay, so I'm just going to stop it before it does anything else. Like I had m mentioned before, because all of this dead time, it might actually be, you know, more cost and time effective to ignore ads. But since it's the challenge in, in here, that's what we're doing. Uh, the next one is called the salesman handler. And also, well, this one is actually pretty simple. It just looks for the salesman image if it finds it. It's going to click on buy and it's going to collect a reward and that's it. It is going to return. So I'll wait for the salesman to appear and show you how it works. Okay, so there he is. So I'm just going to run the bot. And well, you, <laughs> it was pretty fast, right? So it clicked on buy and then it clicked on accept. Yeah. And the next word is collect the achievements, which we actually just saw. Okay, so this means there's an active achievement, right? So when we run it, it's just going to collect it. And it's going to close the window. Okay, so there's actually something very interesting about this one. I have no idea why it did it. There were many other easier options. 
but I'll just show you what the logic behind all of this is. So as you may imagine, the first part is just looking for the loaded achievements, right, for the available achievements um, image, which is, let's see if I can find it, achievements available, yeah. Okay, so if it finds this specific image with the exclamation mark, it means there's something, there's something available. By the way, the stats, as you can see, the stats um, file was deleted because a new one was probably created, right? Uh, but it, it wasn't. Okay, maybe it's because I had it open. Anyway, okay, so it's going to click on it, as I mentioned, and so it is going to take a screenshot, and this is the interesting part. It is going to take a screenshot of an area of only one pixel of height and 746, I'm sorry, one pixel width and 746 pixels height. So basically it's going to open this up and it's going to take a screenshot of a straight line down here. Just a straight line, right? Let's see if by any chance it's the last screenshot that it took. And it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. Okay. So what this, this, the, the idea behind this is that we're gonna read pixel by pixel, right? So the next step is actually converting the image to RGB because something interesting where when you are using, uh, <coughs> OpenCV, OpenCV takes uh, the images in a BGR format. BGR format. BGR stands for blue, green, and red. And when we run basically anything else, we use an RGB format, which is red, green, and blue. And basically, it just has the pixels ordered in a different way, right? So we converted it to RGB just to make things easier, right? Now, what we did is we're going to compare pixels. An image is basically a list, a list of lists, right? So each row is going to be a list and each file are going to be just lists. When, for example, the first one might be, let's say, 2000, which means that it is going to be a black, a black pixel color. So let me just illustrate that on paint. So basically it's going to take a screenshot starting somewhere around here and all the way down on a straight line, right? And it's going to read each one of those pixels. So for example, the first one is brownish and if we go to edit colors, we can see that the RGB values are 156, 62 and 36. And it's going to go down and down and down and it's going to read all of the available pixels, right? And what we're trying to do here is this. First off, we are looking at every single pixel in the image. So this is going to give us the red, the green and the blue value for every pixel in the image. And then I have a, a sample that I already took, which is in the achievement collectible RGB. If I go up, it's going to be in my constructor. And basically, the 165, 236, and 66 is the RGB value of a, of a green pixel. And that green pixel tells me that it is a collectible item, right? So if, if the pixel from the screenshot and the pixels from the sample that I already took match, it is going to click on it. It's going to click on that specific pixel and it is going to collect it. It is going to repeat this process for, well it says loops plus one, loops three. So basically it's going to repeat this process four times. Right? Um, it's going to collect a maximum of four uh, rewards at the time. 
I have no idea why it decided on this, probably just to save time, but that's how it's working right now. So it's going to collect a maximum of four rewards every time it reads the, the images. Okay, so as soon as it is able to click on something, it is going to break and it is going to go back into the for loop. A total of four times. After, after finishing, it is going to close the window, which is, well, basically this one, right? Okay, so let me just show you how that works too. Yeah, so as you can see, as you can see, well, it's very simple, right? It searches for the that um, green pixel, and after collecting, it closes the window. Okay, so this one was actually pretty easy, but this was also very interesting, right? Okay, the next part is the summoning loops. Okay, for this one, let's see. This is the, well, as the name states, this is for summoning. After 200 loops, it is going to try and summon using the green orbs. Uh, the reason I have it every 200 loops is just to give the bot some time to collect green orbs. And when it starts summoning, it summons a good amount of times and not just like once, every once in a while. This probably, or I hope, saves time and computer resources. So if it is able to summon, it is going to summon until it can't summon anymore. And if it can't summon anymore, it will reset the counter to zero and start the loop all over again. Right, so we're gonna to take a look at the summon method. Okay, so it starts by opening the summoning window, which is this one, right? So it's gonna click there, and then it's going to check if it can summon 100 times. So how does it know that it can summon 100 times? Down here, it is going to look at these specific parts. Let me just screenshot. Let me screenshot it and show you. Okay, so again, I guess we could have done some, you know, PyTesseract, some image to text, but I didn't want to do that. So basically, what it does is that if, if it can summon 100 times, this zero over here, this zero will be visible, right? And if it can't summon, well, it's not going to be visible because it's, if it can only summon 10 times, then this, this zero wouldn't be there. Now, what I'm doing, what we're doing is looking for that zero on that specific area. And if it sees it, it means we are able to summon 100x orbs, which is uh, times 10 summoning. If it can do that, it will continue to the next part of the code. And if it can't, it is going to return and it's going to continue to the next part of the code. However, if I am able to summon X 100 times, I mean X 10 times, it is going to click on the summoning location. And yeah, it's going to click summoning location. And then on the fast forward button, right? And it is going to scan five times for this OK button. If it sees it, it is going to click on it. And after that, it is going to register that I summoned once, right? And it is going to return. It is going to return to our main loop. So as you can see, we have the problem that we left this window open, but the bot will take care of it on its own with the, what's it called, with the closed third window function. So I guess we're left here, and then it continues on to this, to this part of the code. Now this part of the code, uh, says that if it's the first time, if it's the first loop, basically, it is going to check for this 2x uh, speed button. So let me open up real quick. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to take a picture of the entire screen and it is going to look for the 1x speed image. And the logic is very simple. 
If it sees that the 1x speed button is there, it needs to click on it to, to make the game faster. And if it sees that it, it is not there, it is going to, well, you know, let me get rid of this guy. Yeah, okay, thank you. So if it's, if it's not there, it means it's going fast already and nothing should be clicked, right? Okay, so also remember that every time it summons, it's going to update the, the stats. Okay, I guess that's it. Let's see, let's see the bot summon, right? So that we don't have to wait um, all this time for the bot to activate. We're just gonna do two. After the second loop, it should try to summon. Okay, so the first thing is gathering achievements because that's one of the first things that we have it doing, right? Yeah, okay, so now it's summoning. Fast forward, oh, we got a legendary. And it's almost maxed out too. Yeah, so I guess that's it for that part. Yeah, it's, it's continuing on, but that's it for now. Okay, so it should continue just summoning after every loop until it doesn't have any more summons available. The reason I have it like summoning and then coming back out and then summoning is because a new achievement is available every time you summon 10 times. It's only one gem. Uh, well, you know, that's, that's, uh, well, it's a bot. Since it's a bot, it doesn't feel lazy doing it. If it was a person, obviously that would be hell. Okay, so now let's see this one into action. Let me get this back to how it was before. And let me g give it a 1x speed. So what should happen now is that at some point it should activate the 2x speed button. But first it is going to collect achievements because some of them are already available. Yeah, okay, I guess I had, yeah, since I had this highlighted, this is the only part of the code that ran. And obviously it threw an error, so let me do that again. Okay, so it's collecting the rewards and the next part should be increasing the speed of the game. Yeah, and there it is. So it increased the speed of the game. The reason uh, this is a very useful function is because if I restart the entire game because something went wrong, it's obviously going to start at 1x speed. Or sometimes, well, you know, I may leave the bot on, I'm in a hurry, I have to go, and I forget to increase the speed. So it's actually very useful to have that around. And I guess that's it. I guess that's all there is to it for this mode. As you can see, it's very complex. Complex. I hope that you guys understood what I was doing here. If you have any questions, let me know. And let's get on to the next one.